All right, we are finally here. Um, this is for uh, Board of City Rock Talk. Um, today, I have a very unique guest with us. Normally, I interview the hard rockers, and, and um, <laughs> Maya is, uh, is kind of the first of this genre, but we're going to move towards uh, uh, what people have been hearing in the rumor mill. Anyways, Maya, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, uh, I'm a singer-songwriter. Uh, I do a lot of different genres, but mostly in the actually kind of folk, uh, pop, sometimes indie rock vein, um, as far as my own solo work. But I'm, you know, I'm currently collaborating with Alex Lifeson from Rush and Andy Curran from Coney Hatch on some yeah. stuff that's very different than my usual sound. <laughs> I, um, I got from Heidi um, recently, uh, you know, just a couple links and stuff. I do my research, but it's nice when the manager would give you a little bit. <laughs> and to tell you, um, I am so ignorant with like things like Harry Potter, uh, Hunger Games even. But um, this, this book, would just that song is phenomenal. I'm not saying that for any other reason. I shared it with friends over the last 24 hours. Um, the, ballad of, the Ballad of Lucy Gray Baird. Um, yeah. And that came from a book, which this is another question. It came from a book called um, The Book of Songbirds and Snakes by Susan Collins, correct? Yeah, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Um, and it's a prequel to the Hunger Games series, which was very popular. Um, there's films and the YA novels are just huge. <laughs> that is great because I had no idea. And you just tied that in really good for me. So I appreciate <laughs> that. So, um, yeah, so... How did you get the, your upbringing? I, I, I think you were born in Colorado, which is, there's a few American states and we're up here in Canada, Canada, uh, but there's a few states I find like kind of romantic in the sense of just that it has a Canadian touch because you have the, the four seasons or three seasons. So did you grow up in Colorado? Or did I you did not. I, uh, I grew up in, in Washington for the most part, okay. but I did, I was born in Loveland, Colorado, and okay. then... We moved to Oregon, Pendleton, Oregon, okay. uh, for a few years, and then Spokane, Washington. I did. I moved a lot growing up. I, I saw, and um, that was. Uh, I mean, I'm not too sure how that ties in with your obvious talent, but um, I know that your main scene right now is um, another, like these other romantic states: Oregon, Washington State, um, Montana, um, that area. And I've seen from your tour history that. You primarily have ambushed those states with your music, and even California. Um, so moving forward, um, I don't want to get into the big push why we're really here just yet. I want to get the uh, readers or the viewers to uh, understand a bit more about you. So um, what is the Hunger Games? There's a bit of information about Hunger Games online with Maya Wynn. Explain that. Yeah, so I did, you know, I'm... I'm a singer-songwriter, and so I'm always uh, looking for opportunities to do cover songs and get more more music out there on YouTube. You know, it's such a different uh, industry now, and mm -hmm. recording covers is a hu huge way to um, gain more fans. And yeah. um, I was reading the prequel to the Hunger Games book, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, okay. which came out last year. And um, the book is full of songs that don't have melodies yet. They're just lyrics at this point. Okay. Um, so as I was reading it, I was thinking, well, it would be, I have all of these ideas for how these songs could sound. And yeah. the character who sings them is, you know, she's a, around my age and yeah. um, it felt like a good fit. You know, I, and I decided to film some videos. I did a cosplay as the character and yeah. uh, created arrangements for these songs. And I think a lot of people really resonated with them because it's yeah. hard to, hard to read a book when there's so many lyrics and you don't really know exactly how that would sound if you're not yeah. musically inclined. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a mystery. So I think um, the videos did really well. A lot of people reading the book would listen to my songs as they read the book. And wow. um, it was just a really cool experience. And that fandom is so huge. They've been so supportive and kind and they, they've sent me uh, so many wonderful messages. And right. um, it's just been a really cool thing over this past year. I'm sure, um, or I'm not sure. I'm asking. That's why. <laughs> uh, Susan Collins has she reached out to you? She has not reached out to me. Oh. It's. Uh, I mean, Susan. it's yeah. It's okay. It, it it is. It's well, and it's such a huge fran franchise. Yeah. I do know that she's seen my videos. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, it's it's 
uh, I think it's complicated because they're going to put their own versions of these songs out. They just greenlit oh, the oh, film oh, sure. and they're making a movie of it. Yeah. Um, and so they might actually not want me to have my versions out because they might be well, competing I'm, with theirs. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure she's blown away. But like you said, she might have her circle of people that she's already, you know, arranged for these things to happen. Uh, musically inclined, you are, obviously. Um, you have more guitars than I've seen in a guitar shop. What was your <laughs> musical training growing up? Because I've seen you play everything well. Um, you, you, you play drums, but I mean, you play the, the foot pedal. <laughs> I, mean, I saw that in one of your videos. But I also yeah. see you play unique instruments. Uh, do you play Rickenbackers? I have not. Oh, okay. There's that one guitar that's in the ballad um, that's got that unique kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of a flute kind of a top. Um, yeah. It looks like the, the signature was like Reckenbacher. What brand is that? So that's a Seagull, or not a Seagull, it's a Timberline harp guitar. Okay. Because like, yeah. Timberline, and I'm thinking Reckenbacher, at least they can justify, at least they have the same amount of letters. Okay. Yeah. So that's their <laughs> yeah. They're close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so did you grow up uh, trained musically and in folk and bluegrass and that sort of thing or all around or, or are you self-taught? I'm self-taught for the most part. I took piano lessons when I was little, um, but I've always loved music. I, I fell in love with it at a young age and um, I spent a lot of time kind of by myself. Uh, I would come home from school and just mm -hmm. play the piano for hours and hours. I was just obsessed and um, I taught myself at 13. I I asked for a drum kit for my birthday. I wanted to be a rock drummer, which is kind of funny. Um, I went through a huge rock phase and was playing the kit after school every day uh, for, you know, hours. And then I taught myself the guitar. My dad had an old classical guitar that he never learned how to play. And I started to go and take it, you know, and uh, teach myself. And um, it grew from there. I just kind of became obsessed with learning new instruments and in the process. And um, my grandpa is a bluegrass musician. He plays mm. mandolin and banjo. Um, okay. So that was always kind of an influence in my life. And uh, I, you know, he got me my first mandolin and I taught myself that as well. And then banjo and everything just grew from there. You play a multitude of instruments for sure. I've got a sense that you're a very spiritual person or you come from a spiritual background. Am I right or am I wrong? And if I'm wrong, call me out on it. <laughs> I am not particularly religious, but I would say that I'm a spiritual person. I That's think that I, I definitely believe that there's purpose and right. uh, something out there for sure. And I, I've, I feel like I'm, I'm definitely a person that knows that I don't know anything. <laughs> you're humble. But I, I, I I try. I hope so. I hope I'm yeah. humble. <laughs> okay, for sure. Um, before we get on to the big news, um, musical influences. I see it's Florence and the Machine, and I was like blown away when I saw Radiohead. I'm a big fan. Um, yes. Did Heidi send you that um, link about Cat Power? Yes. Yes. I, aside from the video, I thought about it today. I thought the video is kind of creepy. Maybe I shouldn't have sent that. But, <laughs> um, have you heard about Cat Power? Was she an influencer? Or was that the first time? Um, it wasn't the first time. I've definitely heard Cat Power's music before. Um, I wouldn't say that it was like a huge influence. I didn't get to listen to her a lot growing up, yeah. but um, I do really enjoy her as an artist and as a singer. And um, I, I do listen to her music quite often. What about Jewel? Because I was playing your music for, uh, like I said, I was running around the neighborhood showing off this. Song. No, but I was telling people and they checked it out and they said, Jewel, yeah. Um, is there any correlation there that you would agree to? And and if not, no, I just, I can, from what I wrote back was your voice inflection, but your, your breathing. And that's just mm -hmm. my, um, a, my opinion of a lay person because I couldn't sing my way out of a wet paper bag. So <laughs> I do. I love Jewel. Um, again, I didn't really get the chance to listen to her a lot growing up, but I do listen to her a lot now. And uh, Heidi's actually a huge Jewel fan. So she sort of introduced me to yes. her um, more recently. And um, it's been really interesting. I've we listened to her book on audio uh, yeah. on our last drive and um she has such a fascinating story and she's mm -hmm. such a, a great storyteller and um she really shines in the live performance area of yeah. things you know she just has such a great presence on stage sure. and, and she's she's like 
she's like yourself. She's kind of raw in the way that, and that here we go again with this geography. She was born in Alaska. So she comes from the colder kind of a climate, right? It's, you're not, it's not like the, the Hollywood Hills kind of a rock scene. <laughs> You guys, and maybe yeah. that has to do with um, the way you take in music and you, you know, digest it. It's maybe coming from um, your access to um, nature, for instance, that you wouldn't get in Cali. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in Montana, similarly, like, it's just absolutely beautiful. And mm. uh, I feel very fortunate to have lived in Montana um, for a few years. And, um, you know, I have family that lives there as well and growing up, going there and being in the mountains and the trees and uh it is it really influences you and influences your connection to just the world around you and right. i think it does it has a, a big influence on things perfect okay we're almost that hold on guys i'm getting there um <laughs> so i think um we can digress over there to the big push um You've been talking to um, Andy Kearns for a few years, uh, Coney Hatch, you know, uh, winner, fellow Canadian, friend of mine. Um, how did that come about? Um, I know there's a little bit of an age discrepancy, but I'm thinking, I'm probably right on when I say you guys didn't bump into each other clubbing. Is that true? Or <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I actually, uh, I got in contact with, with uh, Andy through a contest that I won. I won a mentorship zoom right. call with him and uh you know we hopped on that zoom call and neither of us really knew what we were supposed to talk about hmm. um and that was about four years ago now and i was yeah. you know I, st I still was learning a lot i knew that he i didn't really know much about him i knew that he worked at a company called olay i knew he was yeah. in the industry for a long time yeah i didn't know much about him as a musician at all yeah. and i think that's the funny thing about this whole thing is that i was just really naive and completely just didn't know anything at all. And that's part of why I think uh, it happened is because I just didn't know. Uh, so he was talking about music that he was working on and yeah. was saying that they were in need of a vocalist. And, yeah. um, you know, so I offered to sing on some stuff. You know, I just didn't think it was a very big deal. I was like, oh, you know, he's another musician. If you yeah. need a singer on something, you know, let, you know, let me know. And yeah. he took me off on my offer and... I recorded for, I think, two songs and recorded some lyric ideas and vocal mm -hmm. arrangements and um, it went really well and it was just really fun. And then he called me up one day and was like, hey, so I showed this to Alex and he loves it. And, you know, I still didn't know. I was, I didn't know he meant Alex Lyson. Well, I was just like, well, oh yeah, cool, Alex. I'm the bag now, guys. Thanks. Bye. I'm just joking. Uh, so, <laughs> awesome. um, so go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, well, yeah, so he called me up and uh, told me, you know, I showed this to Alex and he really likes it and he's going to play on it. And I did, I still, I just didn't know until he, he really explained it to me. He's like, you know, you know the band Rush, right? And obviously I was like, yeah. And it didn't really dawn on me until that moment that this was like, you know, that Andy was who he was, that this whole thing was something I was now connected to. It just really, like, I was very, very naive to the whole thing. But, but you um, know what, to be honest with you, I, it wasn't lack of being, you know, ignorant and not, and being aloof. Like, you're, you're what, 27 years old? I am actually 24. Okay, so there you go. Sorry, I didn't mean to age you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you being naive is not any fault of your own. It's like, I mean... I don't know who Beethoven's first girlfriend was. I mean, it's, it's an eight. Yeah, there's decades involved, but I mean, you did know the names Rush and Tony Hatch. So, anyways, to let everybody know, um, Alex Lifeson, Rush Hall of Famer, uh, Tony Hatch, Andy Curran, Juno Famer, and now Maya Wynn, um, who's won, Wynn, who has won many, many contests or placed in many contests as singer, songwriter, actress, has teamed up. And I think you have 12 tracks on a project that's soon to be released by the title that is the project name is Envy of None. Just message Andy earlier. I'm just trying to figure, is there a tentative title? Do you know if there's a title? Um, we have a couple ideas. Um, I know that the it took us a while to sort of settle on Envy of None as sort of the group name. Yeah. Um, but we had a working title for a while called Middle of Nowhere. So, um, so that might come back. I don't know for sure yet. 
So how did you guys come up with Envy of None? That was actually David Steinberg, okay. who he drummed on a few of the tracks. Uh, he was also in some really amazing bands. Um, and he he came up with the name Andy. It was very, fairly recently, actually. And it's some reference to some very obscure quote that he memorized in college. And okay. <laughs> uh, he explained it, and I've already forgotten the complex explanation for it. Um, but I like it, and everybody liked it. Um, I think it, it, it really sounds, fits. <laughs> it almost sounds like it was a, it's a, you're misspeaking. It's like you said something, you didn't mean it. You said envy of none, but you meant something else. Am I? The only one yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah it yeah. is it's very uh yeah i feel like it's very fitting for our our weird little group <laughs> so, what what is the music um composed of what kind of style is it going to be because you got obviously you got alex who's talented in his own way you got andy kern who's like more of the crunchy hard rocker and you have maya Wynn, who's like this folk artist um <laughs> you know bluegrass kind of um you know that kind of style, acoustic moment mainly. So what style of music is coming out of this? Um, Cause I don't, uh, I think people are gonna be blown away first of all. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. It's, it's definitely a mix of all of us. And I think there's a really great variety of songs on this record. Um, you know, there's some really sweet sort of heartfelt stuff, but it's it's all very mixed genre. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to pinpoint, but there's some songs that edge more towards heavy rock. Um, there's a song called Enemy that's like the heaviest I've ever gotten as a singer. Okay. Um, there's one that we're currently working on right now that I'm going to try to scream <laughs> nice. on. Nice. Um, and, uh, and then there's some really, it's just everywhere, all over the place from, there's one song that's very sweet that, um, Alex wrote that is almost more towards the countryside, but oh. it's not country. It's uh, it's very like acoustic and beautiful. And then there's yeah. heavy, gritty, weird stuff on here. It's just a, it's a really fun mix of things. That's cool. Well, actually, I can see that you you're very um, metamorphical. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I mean you're you're ambidextrous in the way that you can do other things. Is your one song, Fearless Girl? Um, that video was pretty edgy and deep and the music going with it was pretty, is, is that something that you, you um, cause I've, I've only had time to look at so much of your material, which is vast, but is that something that you're growing into that sort of, or is that just, you know, that's just my, I do this sometimes I do that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think most of the songs I'm currently working on my own album, mm -hmm. um, and it is, it's it's more towards the genre of Fearless Girl, or I have a song called Lift that's more indie rock. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, I, every song kind of has its own feel and its own vibe, and it, it does, it spans a lot of different genres, and I think my upcoming album is going to do the same. You know, there'll be a, a yeah. folk song in there, but then there's also going to be some indie rock, some more modern pop sounding stuff. It's all you know, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> You're talking about your personal album that we're talking yeah. about? Okay. Um, perfect. We're looking forward to that. Um, obviously, you've got a big viewership all over, you know, TikTok, view, um, Instagram, YouTube. Um, with regards to Envy of None, has there been any um, talk about a rough release date? Because I know when I was talking with Andy, he said it's really because of the industry, it's hard to do that right now. But at least you guys have all the songs are pretty much all of them nailed down. It's just a matter of, I guess, mixing and that sort of thing. Or has that been done? Yeah, so we are in the final mixing stage. Um, I also have some last recording I have to do. I'm mm -hmm. waiting till I'm feeling 100% yeah, to sure. do that. Um, but once we, we have that, we have yeah final mixing and mastering of the record. Um, we shouldn't take too long. Um, we've talked about late summer or oh, fall. Good. I think yeah. Alex really wants us to release at least one of the songs this year. Um, it's hard because if we do sign to a label, which we are in talks with a couple different yeah. places right now, um, they might want to delay things because they need time to promo. Um, so hopefully this, soon. <laughs> the thing that I've been coming across a lot of artists lately is the actual trend is to release a song here a song there um via G greta van fleet did that because what i found out and i'm finding out is 
They're doing that because it's easier to gain the viewership and the attention of the person that's inundated with social media with a track that you've been just going nuts on for six months to perfect rather than a timeline to get 12 done. Am I correct? In my yeah, opinion? I think, yeah. And I also think, you know, it's, we're, we're living in an era where people are consuming content so quickly. Wow, so yeah. if you give them everything all at once, then in a couple of weeks, they're going to want something more, you know, like, okay, yeah. what's the next thing? So if you space it out, I think people tend to enjoy that because they're getting consistent content and it's, you know, I think we're, we're living in a world where people kind of expect that sort of consistent content, consistent new music, and you get, it's hard to do that with a full album. Yeah, you're get, if you're getting a full album today, a full album tomorrow, a full album, an EP, I mean, people only have so many hours in the, in the day. Actually, I'm not sure if you're aware, um, up here in Canada, have you been to Canada yet? Yes. Okay. Um, you're aware then that um, before um, COVID hit, we actually... Um, deciding came on board with the rest of the world and we're using the 24-hour clock now. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. You. <laughs> no, I was getting to the fact that, um, actually, I forgot where I was going with that, but um, yeah, we're so, we're so inundated with things left, right, and center that there's only so many hours in the day, that's where I was going, um, to actually, to, to spend on things. Like, I find if I get 50 emails in a week, I'm, over, I'm overwhelmed where <laughs> you probably can get 1,500 a day. So how has um, how has your fans been reaching out to you since you've um, obviously um, crest, crested um, social social media wise and and worldwide? Yeah, I get a lot of messages on social media. Um, I'll get I've gotten mail like recently, fan mail, which is really cool. You talking um, paper mail? Yeah, no yeah, way. It's really cool. It is. Yeah, cool. people will draw pictures of me and send them nice. or somebody uh crocheted a little whale for me it was super cute <laughs> uh but i i've been really blown away i think um i get messages every day and it is it's hard to keep up with all of them yes, yeah uh, i know well not for me but i mean people like hard to so <laughs> yeah um but i mostly get messages on instagram or um facebook and through my website and um but it comes from everywhere and it's hard to keep up with all of the different websites and all of the different messages. It's, it's a lot, but it's really special to be able to connect with people that way. Before, um, you know, we, we do uh, go further, if you feel like it, um, drop down some of your, um, how to contact you and uh, other than your website, but give that uh, address as well. Yeah. Um, you can contact me, obviously, through my website. Uh, social media is a great place to contact me um, if you want to send me mail. Uh, I mean, like, what's the, what's the addresses for Instagram and, and my and Yeah, uh, all of that is um, Maya Wynn, which is just my name, M-A-I-A-H-W-Y-N-N-E, -N -N -E, yeah. and that's everywhere. Okay, perfect. Um, I should have a niece named Maya, so small world, <laughs> yes. Um Okay, so I know this is very early, but you said you've been to Canada, so obviously we haven't turned you off to Canada and Canadians. Um, is there any kind of discussion about a potential when everything gets smoothed out um, after the album is released to do any kind of dates? Yeah, I think we'll at least do a couple, um, maybe a few smaller, more intimate shows. Um, Obviously, you know, Alex has toured so long and it's such a yeah. grueling thing. Um, but I, I think, we'll, you know, he's he's probably down for a few a few shows yeah. and maybe we'll do some performances for, uh, you know, uh, social media or like live uh, stream or something live right? streams. Yeah, um, I'm sure we'll do a live stream and um It'd be really interesting because we've done everything digitally so far as far as recording and sending things back and forth. Um, trying to translate these songs to a live performance, I think, would right. be interesting. And it would take some time, but I think it'll be really yeah. cool. And I'm yeah. excited for it. It'd be nice to get out again, right? That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have a show coming up in a couple of days, or, um, or has that been put off? Or um, you want to announce yes. what anything you've got on the, on the books coming up? Yeah, uh, so I have two shows coming up in Portland. Um, I've had to delay my shows in Montana because I am a little bit sick. Um, 
but I have a show at uh, the old church in Portland mm -hmm. with the Tal Talbot brothers. I'm opening yeah. for them and I'm pulling up the date right now because I can't remember. <laughs> I think it's the 21st. And if I'm right, I, you got to give me a pat on the back because I just read it. Uh, yes. I'm not sure if it's the 21st, is it? Uh, October 23rd. You're super close. Is it in August? Uh, well, and then I sure. have you the right August 29th at, um, this is a house show, a oh. Blue Heron house show, house concerts, um, okay. August 29th, and it's a bring your own chair. Yeah, it's about our show. show. Right? Yeah. So that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, I have two shows coming up in Portland and hopefully more other places, but tentatively speaking, we're kind of waiting to see. That's awesome. So other, other than music, um, I know that you've done some acting and you've been in the film industry um the ballad of what is that one that you did the soundtrack for yeah the ballad of lefty brown and you did for that movie and so is there anything else in the in the way of um, that um part of your artistic uh performance are you going to do any acting or any more music for uh, movies or yes i hope so um i have actually i did the soundtrack for a horror film it's like a teen horror musical and i would never <laughs> saw that coming maya never <laughs> and uh, i actually i acted in it as well i was the lead actor and it's an independent like very small budget film but we're finally uh finishing that and working on that right now so hopefully that'll be out um in the next year or so and i've also been doing some music for um uh heidi wright's for film and television as well she has some really great scripts and she's always okay. asking me to write songs for them okay. um so there's a a christmas film that hopefully will be made soon that i've written some music for and i'm always looking for more opportunities to act and write music and record for film and television it's really fun <laughs> perfect um just a couple more questions because i know you're busy you probably have interviews after this the guitar is behind you how many do you own <laughs> Um, I have a lot of guitars. I'm not sure. I think I probably have about 12 guitars, okay, okay. but uh, maybe more um, total instruments that I have. Okay, let's go there because uh, that's going to probably be in the triple digits, right? Uh, close. I think I'm around 87 Jeez. instruments. Um, not quite triple digits, but... <laughs> well, eight, you get your, what are you? You're 24. So if you have 80 something, yeah. <laughs> it's a matter of time, right? Yeah, I have two organs over there and a piano and glockenspiel, uh, auto harps, harp guitars, guitars, ukuleles, dulcimers. Um, it's just, it's crazy. It's chaos in this room. <laughs> How do you like playing the, uh, the um, Alex uh, Lifeson Epi? It's been wonderful. What I love about it is that it has um, the option to sound more like an acoustic guitar yeah, he was or an electric. Yeah. And it does, do they all come with the Floyd Rose? Um, yeah, they all have. Uh, I think I think so. I don't know. He sent me this one, uh, and I think he used it for one of the promo videos, okay. um, which was really cool and exciting. Yeah. And I just got it a couple weeks ago, and I still don't know what all of the knobs do, but I'm uh, learning. <laughs> you have time, right? Well, especially with yeah. COVID and, and, you know, I mean, anyways. So, um Canadian influences, and we don't have to go into Andy and Alex, but has there been any Canadian influence in your long, young life um, that you could say, uh, either in the acting industry or social media or, or music? Yeah, uh, I mean, Sarah McLachlan is okay, right? Like, amazing, and uh, she has such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tone to her voice, and um, she's definitely an influence. And, and obviously, like, I do really, really love Rush, and uh, my dad is also a huge Rush fan, so I grew up listening to them, and yeah. um, it was really cool telling my dad for the first time. Uh, you know, I think kind of blew his mind a little bit. Well, yeah. It's the first time I, I my dad, like, I, I felt like my dad really was like, okay, you know, this maybe is a real career for you. Yeah, kind of she's moment. <laughs> Well, you know, to yeah. be honest with you, I mean, um, even without the Alex Lifeson and the Andy Curran, uh, collaboration like your, your music stands on its own like when i watched that video it was just um it was really good and i mean you're at three hundred and thirty-seven thousand views already like you're gonna i mean 
I don't know when, but you're going to hit that one mil mark. It just, those things oh. take time, but it just, it just snowballs. But, uh, all right. Um, um, what's your website for the, for the viewers? Yeah, it's myowin.com. Uh, you That's can see it's spelled like right it there. <laughs> and then you have that, you have your little logo, the M and the W, which I see, which is cool. Um, yeah, I think that, I think this is about it. Just a little teaser for the Canadian and the American, uh, audience um they're gonna be jacked for this especially my hard rock <laughs> readers but i mean yeah i know it was it was wonderful speaking with you uh, do you have anything to say to your fans overall i just thank you and thanks for thank you to everybody who's fans of andy and alex who who have been checking out my music and leaving yeah. kind comments you know i know it's it's such a different genre i'm such a different genre but everybody's yeah. been super kind so just thank you well, that's awesome. And one more thing. Um, I guess you have a snake fetish or something. You have a, <laughs> you have a snake that uh, a snake clown costume or something. <laughs> I don't have a snake fetish. Uh, that was a, a joke video okay. that we made um, because of the Hunger Games book is all about snakes. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it it was a, a joke video um, okay. that was really fun to make. But I also made one with a real snake. I did one oh. of the songs. Um, with a, a real snake crawling on me while I was singing. Um, so yeah, there's lots of snake content out there with me if you're interested. And one more one more thing about Maya, when you do play live, is it every time you play live, you have those butterfly wings? Um, not every time, but a lot of the time. Uh, whenever you can fit them in the elevator of the hotel. You're yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much, Maya. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you uh, in your... It's going to be a, a long future ahead of you and uh, success, you. I'm sure. And we're looking forward to um, hearing what you and Alex and Andy have done with Envy of None. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Bye-bye.